I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. Amen. God bless you. You know, we get joy when we think about what God has done for us. Amen. And, and it's not because any good thing that we have done. Let me turn this fan down. It is because the goodness of the Lord, like CC One and said, is running after. It's running after me. Oh, yeah. Man, when you think about how good God is, it humbles you because when you look at his goodness and who we are as a human, all of our faults, all of our insufficiencies, all of our failures, all of our attitudes that don't line up with, with his uh, original plan and purposes for our life, we should and we do give God glory. And what a time in the Lord is right now, this holy work week to give God glory. Faith has fruits. Amen. There's something that is produced when you have faith. Amen. In Jesus. And similarly, there is things that are produced and become fruitful when you don't have faith. In Jesus, amen. Uh, lack of faith has side effects, amen. And faith in God gives you fruit, amen. Let's look at John 15, if you would. And let's look at mm -hmm, the 12th verse in the 15th chapter of John. It says, this is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Jesus was preparing to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God for the payment of sin and death in which he had no part of. But he wanted to make sure that he could have us for all of eternity. So when the payment for death, hell in the grave was required, Jesus paid it all. Come on, somebody. That is good news to you and is good news for me. And he is preparing to lay down his life, to give up the ghost and die the worst death that's known to man and suffer the worst torment that's known to man. And instead of Wreath withdrawing into the annals, into the backside of the mountain, to be all of by himself, to meditate and to 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 to, to enjoy the solace that he has with the Father. No, he continues to love on the people that God put in his life, and he says, "I want you mm -hmm, to love." everyone that I have put in your life just like I love you. And he goes on to say, this is an example of the kind of love that you should have toward your fellow man because this is the kind of love that I have toward you. And you can see him saying in the next verse, no one has greater love than to lay down his own life for his friends. No one has shown a stronger affection or willing to pay a greater price than a man or a woman or somebody, come on somebody, that have decided to lay down their life for a friend. He's saying that's the kind of love that you should have toward humanity and he says just like I am willing to give up my life for you mm -hmm, because I love you you should have the same love towards one another that's crazy what kind of love is this the kind of love like a father would uh quickly without hesitation without reservation if it was required they would give up their life for the people that they love amen isn't that awesome that we have a god like that isn't that awesome we have a god that 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 doesn't ask 
what is needed. He knows what is required. Just like a baby doesn't know what it needs. But a father and a mother knows what's required. And are willing to give it all up for the protection and safety and the and the and the and the and the and the 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 the, the blessed future that they want them to have. And in that same way, God wants us to have that same blessing on our life. And he paid it off. He goes on to say in verse number 14, you are my friends if you keep on doing the things which I've commanded you. You see, a friend, the Bible says, loves at all times. Ooh, and the Bible says that uh, 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 that, that love covers a multitude of sins. Amen. And, and and baby, no matter how hard we try, no matter how much prayer we do, no much how much of the word we know, we are always going to need the Lord to teach us how to love. Come on, somebody. Woo! I can be very hard to love sometimes hmm? I'm not talking about anybody else but just from my own experience I can be hard to love and it's it blows my mind to to, to, to think that even God even in my worst state he still loves me and he loves me with the kind of love that is willing to lay down his life for me. And when we come to that place in our life and we realize how much he loves us, instead of us being so judgmental and, and, and counting people out because they're their lifestyle or their attitude or their opinions and the decisions they make don't please us and we cut them off maybe we should ask god lord show me mm -hmm. show me how to love like you love because you have commanded me mm -hmm, to love others like you love me and i can't do that on my own come on somebody because if somebody jack slapped me mm -hmm, like chris Grock got slapped by by will smith i most likely mm -hmm, will not respond back in love come on somebody but the kind of love that god has oh gosh Whew. hallelujah that kind of love covers all of the uh, atrocities of humanity. Mm, mm, mm. And maybe during this holy week, mm -hmm, maybe during this holy week, you're, you're feeling the pressure mm -hmm, of, of the unlovable. Mm -hmm. Maybe you say, you know, maybe there's people in your life that, that, that we categorize people unlovable and very difficult, very challenging. And, and, and it's hard to let that love faucet flow that comes from heaven and maybe you're even you're, you're even uh, suffering abuse neglect at the hands of an unreasonable and wicked person and you're stuck in a cycle of of, of torment and, and, and you don't know a way out I, I, I've been there Mm -hmm. I've been there. And I think in some manner, in some form, we all have been in places where we're suffering at the hands of somebody that's wicked and unreasonable. But God says that we can love them mm -hmm. with the love of God that's shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And as we look at, 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 at this, this text, we can see that even in the worst of times, Jesus knew his time was drawing near. And instead of withdrawing from those wicked people, those people that he knew that had the worst intentions for him, that wanted to take his life, take him out and to steal his purpose, he still took time to love on the people that were in his life. And he, he chose to forgive, even on the cross. He looked out amongst the people. Some of them cheer, cheering in, in revelry and, and, and celebrating 
that the, the that the Lord of glory was dead was dying uh, 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 and others sobbing with great mourn and, and grieving uh, the passing of our, our dear Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He looked out amongst the humanity and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And it's the love of God that gives us an opportunity to come out from amongst the destinies and the and the and the outcomes of those that don't have faith, Amen. And 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 and, and be a part of the eternal promise of God in and in His kingdom that has no end to bear the blessings that is laid up for those that allow Jesus to. To, to, to be their Lord and Savior and to share with them the love that he has for humanity. It's not difficult when you ask Jesus. Jesus knows what he's doing and he's standing at the door. The Bible says in Revelations that he stands at the door and knock. And if, if you open the door, mm -hmm, he will enter in. And if you feel that knocking on your heart today, and you, you're suffering. Amen. You're suffering. I'm not saying that you have it all together, but there's things in your life that you're tormenting you, that's hurting you, and you don't know what to do. I know for a fact you can face your fears with the faith in Jesus, and you can have a blessed outcome in your future if you allow the Lord Jesus to fill your cup to overflowing with the Holy Spirit of God that will quench every doubt, that will heal every wound, that will lift up every heart and bring the spirit of liberty into every home. If you are suffering, pray this prayer with me. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus for Jesus' sake. Mm -hmm. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Cleanse me with your spirit and fill me with your Holy Ghost that I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. God, I thank you right now for Jesus whom you sent to pay a ransom for my sin and debt. Lord, I am in torment in these fiery trials and I pray that you would deliver me from this fire God and that you would you would you you would you would give me the strength to persevere I trust you with everything that seems difficult I know that with you you'll make it easy and I ask you to help me in all of those things Jesus I know the fruit of my faith mm -hmm, is the blessing and the promise of God. So in you, I say yes. And with you, I say amen. So be it. I know that the storm will not last. And there is an expected expiration and a time of, 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 of joy that's coming. And an expectation that this will not last always and I pray for you I pray that you would even now give me the grace the hope the faith and the encouragement and the word to stand fast and to move forward looking unto you Lord the author and finisher of my faith I receive it right now I thank you for bearing me up in this Lord I thank you for putting strength in my mind and 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 my will I will trust you Lord and I thank you for helping us Lord in Jesus name amen Lord bless you and keep you I pray in the name of Jesus that during this holy week you will see the sacrifice that Jesus demonstrated he demonstrated his love towards us that even when we are still in sin, that he came and he died for us. And because we 
we receive him, we can face whatever we need to face because it's only a matter of time before we walk right out of it. Mm -hmm. And we can sing, we have joy unspeakable for what he's done for, for us. And we can celebrate his victory over the pain of the whipping post, the pain of the betrayal, the pain of the piercing of his side, the pain of the nails in his hands, the nails in his feet, and the crown of thorns, the pain of the persecution that he endured, that he bare, was buried in a borrowed tomb, but up from the grave he arose, a man alive forevermore with the keys of death, hell, and grave, and the grave in his hands, and just like he arose, he brought victory to those that choose to believe in him. And because we believe in him, we will have a victory. We will have a victory. And it won't be because of anything that we did, but because Jesus is the victory. And this is the victory that we have in this world even the faith that we have in Jesus Christ. And we're going to have that kind of faith. And we're going to see what we've been praying for. And we're going to celebrate the victory. Amen. Because Jesus is not dead. He is alive forevermore. And he's got the key to our victory. And though we might not have it now, we shall have it in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. I prophesy his word. And I pray that the Holy Spirit leads you and guides you, strengthens you, and, 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 and corrects you, and shapes you, and molds you. And, and, and you would produce the fruit of God that he placed inside of you before the foundations of the world. I love you guys. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Bye-bye.